As we all know, Pixar once again walked away with the Oscar for Best Picture, but this year there was a twist. Nobody was happy about it. In a telecast where there were few surprises and it seemed to be business as usual, both the industry and the majority of media seem to have missed this bubbling audience disdain for the studio that once upon a time could do no wrong. Yes, back in the day, moviegoers had the same enthusiasm for Pixar flicks as they did for Apple products, a nice correlation as Steve Jobs was one of the main creative and financial forces behind the studio. But interestingly, just as the change in leadership at Apple after Jobs' tragic death has led to some disillusionment with their products, Pixar hasn't been quite the same since it was purchased by Disney. First off, they've not only abandoned their no-sequel rule, but seem to have embraced the opposite. Although who can blame them after Toy Story 3 became the first animated film to ever join the Billion Dollar Club. Now we've got Monsters University this summer, and Andrew Stanton is hard at work on the script for Finding Nemo 2, with Albert Brooks already signed on and Ellen DeGeneres in talks to come back as well. However, Pixar does have some original films on the horizon. In 2014, they'll debut The Good Dinosaur, which imagines a world where dinosaurs weren't killed by a giant meteor and coexist today with us humans as farmers. Apparently, they learn to talk and get opposable thumbs. Because seriously, how else can a dinosaur farm? Or is this going to be like Cars and Cars 2, where I spend a large part of the movie wondering who the heck built all this stuff for them to use? John Lasseter has also said that The Good Dinosaur plans to pretty much leave out carnivores in favor of the plant eaters. But ask any kid or anyone who's seen Jurassic Park, the carnivores are the best part. This all plays into a conversation I've been having with a few people that Pixar has become not so much formulaic in their storytelling, but emotionally manipulative. It's as if they push certain buttons to elicit an emotional response from the audience, not for the sake of the story, but to win favor for their films. I personally first noticed this with Up in the opening sequence, and then again in Toy Story 3 with that incinerator scene, a scene that totally didn't fit with the rest of the franchise and took it to a much darker place than was necessary. Holocaust and 9-11 imagery? Really? But hey, both films went on to win the Oscar for Best Animated Feature, so whether or not Pixar is genuine, their strategy is working. But then again, is it? The widespread feeling that Wreck-It Ralph and Paranorman were robbed shows that while the Academy might still fall for Pixar's tricks, they are once again hopelessly out of sync with audiences. By the way, what else does Pixar have scheduled? There's Inside the Human Mind, which is like Herman's Head or Cranium Command, but with a little girl. But by the way, both Herman's Head and Cranium Command were short-lived. Not a good sign. They are also going to make a movie focused on the Mexican Day of the Dead, which might have some potential if it can appeal to the Nightmare Before Christmas crowd, as well as tap into the growing Latino movie audience. So what do you think? Is Pixar still your favorite animation studio? And do you still have faith in their upcoming projects? If not, why? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.